Hi guys, welcome. Uh, every now and again we like to do a, a video that highlights one of the many genres that we deal in and this time it's the turn of Lighthouse and Beacons and I think this is one I've been really looking forward to. One, so I could get together some of my favourite stuff but also because I think it really shows what the essence of marine is. Uh, you know, obvious, of, apart from the obvious uh, decorative beautiful fittings and fixtures that we used to get from ocean liners um, nearly all marine fittings are designed to be 100% functional with no form um, being taken into consideration and in lighthouse and beacons you really get that because you know here in the showrooms for example you'll start to, if you spend a bit of time here you'll start to see the the difference in quality between merchant navy and and royal navy um, there's a definite jump in quality when it comes from the cargo ship to the warship and if you spend a bit longer here you'll see that the the, the big jump up again the highest quality grade material and design that you can see is uh, is that of the lighthouses and the beacons and and the gear from trinity house um, and i think this start to start off i think the beacons this type of beacon is a really good example of that now these were designed in 1910-ish uh, and the design didn't change for 60, 70 years, only the materials really. Um, and at no point did this in 1910, at no point did the designers of this, uh, after testing and getting it to work on the harshest conditions in the planet, no, at no point did the designers get a tap on the shoulder going, well done, you've got it working to the as well as it possibly can to the point where the light won't go out in any sort of conditions and for a whole year because these were these would last a whole year without refilling um, at no point did he get a tap on the shoulder going now make it look nice it's just a hundred percent function uh, and uh, obviously they don't look like this before we do, we throw a no expense spared approach to refurbishment uh, and it's painstaking it's laborious and it's pretty we have to be very careful but uh, over here I can show you what they look like before we do that process in their red their famous iconic red color now beacons are organized in in size there's 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 everything they start off with a, a called a 100 and the one the numbers correspond to the diameter of the Fresnel lens inside um, inside or outside in this case so that's a 100 the baby of the family and then it jumps well there is a 160 and a 140 but that's a 200 which is the sort of most common size uh in deep sea marker boys and then they jump to a 300 and from there it goes to a 375 and then there's the daddy the 500 of which we had one last year in fact if anybody comes to see us at the southampton boat show or you might have seen it on the website for 10 minutes because it sold very quickly. Um, oh yeah, and there's a video of that actually, which if you scroll down here in the YouTube channel, our YouTube channel, you'll find a great video on that alone. And beacons, you know, the subtle, the, the beauties and the subtleties, the, the triangular glass is just because that's the strongest way of doing it. And uh, you know, the, uh, the, the, the Fresnel lens inside, the, Fre the Fresnel lens is, was a major evolution in, in design. Um, before Fresnel lenses, the, 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 the light source was amplified by, you know, sh a, a polished metal and then a mirror. Uh, and it was in the early 1800s that a French guy called Augustine Fresnel, who in his, in his spare time was working on and playing with optics and refraction of light and in in conjunction with a local glass worker uh, maker he he designed the Fresnel lens and immediately the world took on that design because it did an enormous it, it did a, a so much better job of focusing a beam of light uh, in fact the Americans were a little bit late and refused to pay the money for these Fresnel lens but it was the mariners of America that insisted that they adopted this new system so the Fresnel lens is a is it a really important design in its own right and you'd be forgiven for just not thinking twice about it because it's in ship's lamps and you see it so commonly 
And uh, that leads on to sort of lighthouse lenses. Now, uh, in our collection at the moment, we've got a few restoration projects and we've got this beautiful one that's off to London soon. Uh, this is a fifth order range light by Chance Brothers, 1870s. Lighthouse lenses are divided into orders, starting with the first order down to the sixth order. The first order is the one that you would have seen in the giant lighthouses. And there's, there's one in the London Science Museum, uh, which I've always wanted a first order lens, but to, find, to buy one complete is nigh on impossible, mainly because they're still in use. And the other drawback from those is the fact that they're, they're nine, 10 foot tall, uh, and they can weigh three to five tons. But it hasn't stopped me from trying. And so I've been buying up where I can, all around the world, individual components of a first order lens. Um, that's a start. Those are squashed together, but there's a big segment in the middle. There's huge triangles around it. And I've got five, but I need more of the rectangle panels with the bullseye in the middle, which focuses the beam for 20 miles. They, in fact, came from Little Ross Lighthouse in Scotland, which was, and they, those, those go to, they were, they were from 1840s. And uh, over here, I've got a lovely work in progress fourth order lens. This is a fourth order. This one's French. Um, there's a segment missing, which we're, we're trying to source at the moment. And this next year will be polished up, taken apart and, uh, and, repre and presented on a stand. And you could, but I'm sure already you can get, get an idea of how magnificent that will look when it's done. And uh, yes, I, I've also got uh, a, a beautiful drum lens by Arga. That is a 500 Fresnel lens. Um, and Arga, you, if, for those of you who haven't heard of that name in conjunction with lighthouses and lenses and the beacons, uh, you know Arga obviously from the ovens and cooking at home. Uh, Arga was started by Gustav Dahlin, uh, the Swedish scientist. And he, another evolution in, in, uh, in lighthouse and, 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 uh, and burners, he designed this burner that uh, efficiently, he turning gas into bubbles, and that 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 was a ninety percent advancement in efficiency, and allowed for automation of beacons and lighthouses. Um, he was the master, and in fact, an interesting fact about him is is that whilst experiment just before he received the Nobel Prize for this invention. He, uh, in a, during an experiment, there was a big explosion and he was permanently blinded. And it was whilst he was convalescing at home with his wife that they, he came up with the idea for the Arga oven. So there's a bit of history for you. Um, so there's a few pieces assembled here. You know, you probably recognize the beacons from our logo. Uh, we, we, in the late eighties, my father bought all of the, as, as beacons went from gas to solar, they changed all of the beacons and my father bought close to 600, all of them, close to 600 beacons of all shapes and sizes out of Trinity House. And I remember the point when we were both leaning against the back of the forklift and looking across at this sea of beacons in the yard. And uh, we thought we better come up with a business name here. So that's where Trinity Marine came from. Uh, and that is why the beacon is our logo, because we feel it's the epitome of marine design and quality, which is what we try and do here. So if you'd like to learn a little bit more, there's already a couple of videos on YouTube highlighting the big 500 lens we had last year and this stunning Chance Brothers fifth order lens. We've got a good video on that that traces the restoration process of it and shows you how much work we put into it all. And uh, in fact, yeah, YouTube is starting to grow now, our YouTube channel, uh, and we've got plans, good big plans for, for more videos. In fact, I want to come back to this subject and do much more of an education video on this whole beautiful genre that we're proud of. So subscribe to that so you don't miss a trick and uh, keep your eye out for the next video on our next wonderful genre.